All right, everyone, if you've stuck with me, we are on the final review of Algebra 1. Uh, this is Mr. Harding, and we are going to finish up with the Unit 7 review. Unit 7 is a lot of data collecting and data analyzing, so we can use our calculator for a lot of it. So if you have your calculator with you, please get it out. I'll have mine. Uh, what you notice is you can use the information here in number 1 for the first 12 questions, and I think the Unit 7 review is 17 questions, so that will help us out significantly. So as I go through here, remember we want to start by hitting stat. I know I have a little bit slightly older calculator than some of you guys, but most of the buttons are in the same place. So we start by hitting that stat button, which is over towards the middle of your uh, calculator. We want to edit a list. Notice how there's, there's three columns at the top here, edit, calculate, and then run some tests. We want to edit because we want to edit a list. So 1-1, one, one, enter. Now, if you, like me, have some values in a list here, we need to clear those out. So to clear these out, go all the way to the top of the list, hit clear, enter, and it should erase everything. You don't want to delete. If you delete a list by accident, it will be gone for a very long time, and it will really mess things up. It, it impacts big time. Clear list. Okay, so you go all the way to the top, clear, enter, and it will get rid of everything in that list. Okay, I am going to put block 4 in list 1, block 5 in list 2. I'm not really going to say much over the next 30 seconds here. I'm going to type in it as quickly as I can. You should do the same, and then we'll continue with number 1. Make sure, like I just did there, so I'm done with list one, I moved over to list two to start typing in block five's information. All right, I've got all the information into my calculator. I'm ready to go. If you need more time, just quick pause this video and rejoin when you're ready. All right, we're going to create a back-to-back -back or a double stem and leaf plot. Organize information. Stem and leaf plots are great to organize information, but they're tedious, so we're going to use our calculator to help us. It's going to be a, it's a common theme in this entire unit. Notice, well, when you hit stat again, the very first column, the edit column, you see that we can sort our lists. So, if we sort A and sort D, A stands for ascending, D stands for descending. So ascending starts at the smallest number and goes up, it ascends, and descending starts at the highest number and goes down, it descends. So we want ascending, and now I need to type, I need to tell my calculator what to sort. Notice how above your numbers you have the lists in a different color. You need to hit that color and then the number. Notice how that says list one up there? And then it's going to tell me it's done. And let's do the same thing. Let's sort list two. <coughs> and it'll tell me it's done. And now look at this. If I go back to stat, my list. Look at that. Leads to greatest. That's going to help me big time. Because we're going to go and what we see is we need a stem in the 40s. So I'm going to put a four here. And then I need to work my way all the way up to 100, which means I'd have a final stem of 10. And for uh, block 4, which we can put wherever we want, I'll put block 4 off to the right here. Block 4 was in list 1. That started us off with a 48 and then a 49. And here's, this is why it's so easy. I already have them organized in my calculator. It's so nice. And then we go to 55, then the 56. None in the 60s. Only one in the 70s. It's a 74. Only one in the 80s. It's an 83. Then I get down to the 90s, and we have a 93, a 95, a 96, a 98. And then we get to the last one where we have a 100. We have another 100, we have another 100, we have a 106, 
and we have a 106. So we actually have five scores in the 100. List two is block five. So I'm going to work off to this side. We had a 46, then we had none in the 50s, then we had a 64 and a 66, then we had three in the 70s, a 75 and two 79s, then we had an 83 and an 86, then I had a 90, a 94, a 98, a 99, and then we only had one 100 in block 5. And so I've organized my information and my stem and leaf plots finished. Now you need a key, so let people know what 4-8 means. 4-8 means they got a 48% on the test. Number two, find the mean, median, mode, and range. You can do this easily on your calculator. Remember how to do that. Stat. I want to calculate something this time. One variable stats, and what I want to calculate on is on list one. And now I can see my mean for block four. So block four had a mean of 83.93. That was the mean. And they had a median, remember where you can find median? Median, you scroll down, median's M-E-D, so they had a median of 95. Mode, unfortunately, you have to find on your own, so what's the most common number as I look here? Definitely those three 100s. Range, I don't really need my calculator, I can use the stem and leaf plot. Range is biggest minus smallest, so 106 minus 48. Well, that'll give me 58. Whoops, I'm sorry I wrote that backwards. That seems weird, but range is 58. All right, block five. I'm going to the same place. I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to hit stat. I'm going to scroll over. I'm calculating this time. One variable stats, but this time I want to make sure that it says list two. And what I find out is the mean is 81.46. Remember, mean is at the top. It's where I call it X bar. That's what people call it, X bar. It's all the way at the top here. Scroll down. We can find the median, 83. <coughs> Remember, mode is the most common number, so we're just going to look. Most common number seems to be a 79. And the range, again, biggest minus smallest, 100 minus 46 is 54. All right, so that's how you can use your calculator. Now that we have a good stem and leaf plot, we can easily answer 3 and 4. Which block had more scores in the 70s? 1, 2, 3. And this was, I should label this, block 5, remember? So, block 5. Number four, which block had more students with a 90 or above? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in block four when they only had five. So that's definitely block four. All right, continuing along, and I'm going to leave this because this might help. If the student in block four who earned a 55 would have earned a 70 instead, how would that affect? Well, before and after. That's what we got. We got a little before and after going on here. Before, when they had earned a 55, this is block 4. Block 4's mean was 83.9. So mean was 83.9. And the median was 95. All right. Let's go change that 55 to a 70. Here's how using your calculator is so nice. So you want to edit. You want to change this 55 to a 70. Just highlight the 55 and type 70, and it'll change the 55 to a 70. And now I can run my stats on list 1 again, and I find out that the mean went up by a full point. The median, you might notice, didn't change. The mean went up because the person's score went up, okay? And a mean is made up of all of the values.
Now, before we continue further, let's go back and let's change that 70 back to a 55 for the rest of the questions. Remember, number six, measures of central tendency, that's mean, median, or mode. So which measure of central tendency is best for block four? As I look at block four, what they're essentially asking me is, and, and I'm going to throw out the mode because they're not asking me for the most common. It's either mean or median. Does 83 make more sense of the scores in this class? Or does 95 make more sense of the scores in this class? And I think I'm going to go with 95. And the reason being, I have these really low values that are pulling the mean lower than what it really is. Most people scored around the 95. Okay, we had nine people in this class score around that 95. That 83, we only have one person who scored similar to an 83. And it's because, again, that 83 got brought down by these four people who did not do well on this test. So I'm going to say 95, the median, makes more sense. And the reason is the median because of the extremely low scores. All right, five number summary. Block four, block five. This will help me create my box and whisker plot below. Well, remember five number summary is the minimum, Q1, the median, Q3, and the max. And I'll write those again. Minimum, Q1, median, Q3, and the max. Good news is you have those values. Stat, scroll over, calculate, put in list one, and you have all those numbers if you scroll down to the bottom. 48, 56, 95, 100, and 106. And now if I do the same thing for list two, I get, and I scroll to the bottom, I get a 46, 70 and a half, 83, 96, and 100. You should have the same five values that I had. And now we can make our box and whisker plot. Now, I gave you a hint to count by five. Think about the smallest we should start out is probably 45. Now I can count by fives. And I don't need to get past 110, so I'm good to go here. Label these, so I'm going to put block 4 on the bottom, and I'll put block 5 above it. All right, block 4, we had a minimum of 48. You're just doing your best to guess where it is. 48 is going to be between 45 and 50. We have Q1 at 56. We have the median all the way up here at 95, then the Q3 is at 100, and then the max is at 106. And I can connect those three lines to make my box, and I can connect my whiskers to the box. Block 5, minimum of 46, so a little bit smaller minimum. Q1 is a little bit higher though, 70 and a half, so we're all the way to here. And then we have a line at 83 a line at 96, those three lines make the box, and then the last goes to 100. And so you can see the difference between the two. Lower scores in block five and lower higher scores. Block four, better scores overall, better median. Just like I kept my list out, I'm gonna keep this out to help me answer the last four questions. Which class had the smaller interquartile range? Remember, that's IQR. Smaller. That's Q3 minus Q1. Visually, just look at the box. Block 5 had the smaller one. Okay? So block 5 was smaller. And they ask me, which, what was that IQR? Well, Q3 minus Q1. 96 minus 70 and a half would be 16 and a half. Oh, I'm sorry. 15 and a half would be that IQR. 
Nope. I'm going to use my calculator. I apologize. It should be 25 and a half. I messed up too many times, so I'm going to use my calculator there. 25 and a half. All right, which class had the higher median? Again, just using my box of whisker plot, higher median, very clearly block four had the higher one. So block four, and what was that median? Looks like it was a 95. What percentage of students in block five had a test score greater than 70 and a half? So locate 70 and a half, it's right here, okay? Remember, box and whisker plots are split very nicely, 25% for every section of the box and whisker plot. So, I would say 75% of students in block 5 had a score greater than 70 and a half. That's pretty good. Majority of the class got a C or higher. For block 4, why is the whisker, so we're looking at block 4, why is the whisker from the minimum to Q1 so much smaller than the box from Q1 to the median when they both are 25%? The reason is this information is more spread out. There were a couple of scores that were very similar in block four, right? Remember those scores that were very similar, close together? And then the rest of the way, the information was more spread out. That's why there were some similar low scores making the min to Q1 small, smaller. I'm going to say in parentheses more compact, but the scores from the Q1 to the median were more spread out. And that's the reality. That's why you have that different shape. All right. Now we just have a couple of questions on a different situation, and then we have some probability questions, and we're done with Unit 7. So new stem and leaf plot, it doesn't really tell us too much, just 1, 0 is equal to 10. How many data points are there in the 50s? 1, 2, 3, 4. What is the range of this data? Well, biggest minus smallest, 58 minus 10 is 48. Remember, that's what range means, biggest minus smallest. What is the median? The median is the middle number. Two ways to find this. Remember our shortcut. n plus 1 divided by 2, n being the number of values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 plus 1 divided by 2 is going to give me not the median, but the middle value. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That must be the median. That's how you can use that median formula to help you. If not, what you have to do is you've got to cross one off, cross one off, cross one off, and just keep going until you get to the middle, which this can be tedious. So I understand if you want to find it the other way. All right, two probability questions. They have multiple parts to them. But uh, number 16, we have a bag of poker chips, 10 red. 6 blue, 7 green, 3 are black. That gives me a total of 26 chips. What's the probability that she gets a black chip? Um, well, there are 3 out of 26. And you can make that a decimal if you would like to. Decimals are totally okay. If you leave it as a fraction, it's got to be reduced, though. What is the probability that's red or, keyword, blue? Red or blue. So I don't care if it's red or blue. That means there's 16 chances to get what I want. Just again, remember that you reduce that. You can divide them both by 2. You get 8 out of 13. What's the probability that it's not green? Not green means red, blue, or black. Or what it also means is not green. So I can take my total and I can subtract the green ones from it. So that means there's 19 chances to get what I want. You'll notice 19 is also what the number is when I add the red, the blue, 
and the black together. So two different ways to find that out. Last question, and it's a long one, lots of parts to it. So we have a standard deck of cards. Uh, there are four suits. Those suits are hearts, clubs, diamonds, and spades. Each suit has 13 cards, and they are ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, and king. What's the probability that she pulls a seven? It doesn't matter what color. It doesn't matter what suit. How many sevens are there? Well, there's one for each suit. So there's one, two, three, four sevens out of 52 cards. Again, just make sure that you always reduce fractions. One out of 13. That's the chance that she would pull a seven. What's the probability that she pulls a heart? Well, there's one out of four suits that are hearts. So there's a one out of four chance. What's the probability that she pulls a jack and, keyword, a king without replacing? So let's first start with what's the chance that she pulls a jack? Well, there's four jacks out of 52. And means we're going to multiply. What's the chance that she gets a jack and then a king, but she doesn't replace? So she pulls that jack out. She sees it's a jack. She keeps it out. She then goes and reaches. Well, now the deck only has 51 cards. Now, four of them are kings, but only 51. So we have to take that 4 out of 52, and we have to multiply it by 4 out of 51. And then if you want, go ahead and make that a fraction or leave it as a decimal. But I'm more of a fraction person. You get 4 out of 663. Low chance that, that happens. Letter D, what is the probability that she pulls a face card? Face cards are king, queens, or jacks. Well, there's three for each seat. So three, six, nine, twelve. Twelve out of 52. They both can be reduced by four. So that gives you three out of 13. What's the probability that she pulls a red eight? So something I didn't tell you yet. Hearts are red. Diamonds are red, but they're the only two cards that are red, two types of cards. So there are two red eights. Always reduce your fractions. Uh, we're going to skip F. Actually, I'm sorry. I originally wanted to skip it, but I think I have since edited this question. It used to be on old packets a uh, impossible question, but I think I have since edited it. So let's look at this again. She pulls. What's the chance she pulls a red card? Well, half of the deck is red, half of the deck is black, and means to multiply. What's the chance then she gets a diamond? Well, think about this. If she pulls out a red card, oh, nope, this is the impossible question still, or at least a little too difficult for Algebra 1. I did not edit this, so I'll explain why I, I didn't want this question to be here. This is tricky because that red card could have been either a diamond or a heart. And so you actually get like two different answers. What's the probability that she pulls a red card? Well, if that red card was a heart, then that doesn't affect the diamond. But if that red card was a diamond, then it does affect the diamond. And so it's just kind of tricky to think about. So we're going to skip that. All right, what's the probability that she pulls two aces in a row? Well, she's got four chances to get an ace. In a row means the first one's an ace and, which means to multiply, the second one's an ace. But instead of having 52 cards, there's now only 51 because she's not going to replace that ace. And instead of being four aces, there's only three aces. So we can start to cancel some things here. And we end up getting, there's a 1 out of 221 chance. Very, very small chance that that happens. That concludes Unit 7.
that also concludes the whole year of algebra and all of the reviews that we've done together. So if you've watched every video, hopefully it has helped you review. Um, hopefully it hasn't necessarily taught you any new stuff, although perhaps if you did not have me as your teacher, maybe it did teach you something new just because of the way uh, all of the teachers in this school, we teach things just slightly different. Uh, so maybe you did learn something new, but more importantly, it was just to help you review. So for one final time, if you didn't understand how something went down, ask your teacher for help. Don't try to learn from these videos. These are review videos to help you just make sure that you're on the right page and maybe clear up a question or two. But if you have lots of questions, if you don't understand what you're doing, ask your teacher. Good luck on your uh, Unit 7 tests and good luck on the end of the year exam. And if you have any questions, just make sure that you ask me.